Labs, I'm thinking of Pugsy, I'm thinking of Java, just to get into this spot with a guaranteed top three finish. Again, coming in as PR number 43 uh, was far and away on basically no one's list up until this point. Now, the crazy thing is, is up until Java, Blue did not lose a single game. And yet, the Java set was a game five. It went all the way towards the end, was a real nail biter for really both fans of either player there. But we're getting now into this one. The last time I saw Blue on Brawlhaven, he was piecing up Java. It started off a little bit rough for him on this map, but towards the end, Blue was able to take it out. Hopefully we don't see a wall slip stock loss from Blue. Uh, yeah, that was definitely kind of tragic. He hit the, uh, the Nair, but didn't get much more after it. Right now, though, he's looking pretty all right. Has a lot of stage control. Took a lot of damage at the start of this one. But now you're starting to see why he's earned his spot here in the winner's final, where his sight has really been coming alive. He is keeping Stingray on this corner. Goes over to the sword for that KO potential. Now, one thing that Blue might have on those scythe initiations that we didn't see on some of the previous players that he was playing against is... Stingray may not have the best 45 degree angle approach denial. He does have a jump neutral air, of course, but if we're just talking about grounded play, he really doesn't have that option if Blue is going to end up coming in with a falling down air or anything like that. Yeah, that's a really common approach vector for side players is those approach dares. And of course, Stingray with that Lance, he'll have the N sig, he'll have that down sig, two really strong options, but they're still signatures. They're going to yeah. have a little bit more recovery frame. They're going to be a little bit tougher when he's stuck on that Lance to, uh, to punish with. So getting on in this one, just a lot of footsies back and forth. No major pokes coming out. It was really just that weapon toss for the past 10 or so seconds. Stingray, we saw earlier today, not afraid to play a slow game. Blue is going to clean that one up all the way down to the bottom side of that wall with a ground pound on the site. That's kind of one of the deepest that we've seen Blue go, Eriot, especially if he's the one initiating the engagement between the two players rather than him being the one recovering over to the platform and then maybe going for like one move as a rebuttal before going back to the main stage. Yeah, it was a really long ground pound, which uh, worked out considering Stingray had no weapon, so it was a lot harder to respond to, but right now he's sitting on that Lance, and it's worth mentioning his Lance play is not like we see from other Lance players. He is not constantly doing like side lights or dash jump dare approaches Instead, he's really picking and choosing when he throws out those attacks, which makes it really hard for Blue to punish the end lag of those attacks. Now, if we're looking at Stingray being an aerial player, we're seeing a lot of Nairs coming out, but because of the way that Nair works, oh, he Didn't thought catch Blue was going to push into him after getting hit by that D-Light. But if we're looking at Nair as a move itself to try to push Blue away, you're going to have that 360-degree hitbox, but it's not all around you at the same time. It's not like a Spear Nair. It's going to be like a blow you in in front of you, then straight in front of you, above you, and then behind you. So if you don't hit that one on the beginning and your opponent is in front of you, specifically with those nares, then even though it can cover that 45 degree angle at the beginning of it, you have a lot of active frames of that attack that aren't protecting you on that 45 degree angle. Well, right now, Stingray needs to find uh, a lot more than just a couple of nares against Blue as he is put off stage again, disengages from the wall. He's going to get the side air to clean up that stock count. But now, it is on to his spear. Doesn't even opt to try to steal that weapon away. He's like, I'd rather just keep the spear, maybe not risk being left unarmed against Blue. Little jump side air to sort of start this final stock off for Blue. He was doing pretty well against the Spear of Java. That was definitely the better weapon between the two. And from what we've seen from Stingray today, we've seen a lot of really strong Spear play as well compared to Lance, which isn't weak, but he's definitely been leaning on the Spear quite a bit more. Nice side, oh, okay, nice three piece there. Side light neutral air into the down air. Didn't really send Blue off the stage Ooh. too much. Cleaning that one up with a D-Light stare while Blue was still in the orange. And that is going to be game one going to Blue. Yeah, great pickup for Blue, getting that recovery to KO, because Stingray was starting to find that momentum with his Lance, and Blue was able to shut it down before it got too far away from him. Great spot dodge to get through that Lance down line. I'm not sure how in danger he was. I would have to actually see the hitboxes yeah. compared to the animation. To I know think if... he was like safely above it. Okay, that, that would probably be my guess rather than having the iframes to last through the hitboxes that came out because usually that can be a pretty tough one mm -hmm. to spot dodge just on the active frames of that attack alone. Oh, but now we're seeing Stingray over to the spear this time. Doesn't have to worry about the active frames of any uh, Lance down lights for now. But AO Blue, again, he gets that stage control and he starts keeping Stingray onto the outside walls. There is a weapon spawn on the field. Neither player really making any moves towards it. 
I think if they end up picking it up, it's just because they want to throw their weapon towards their opponent to sort of maybe break up the timing, break up an approach or anything like that. Even that sidelight Stingray is going to wait on that. No major commitments yet. No second sidelight. Beautiful down signature. That's going to KO pretty early. Shouts out to Brawlhaven on that one. Yeah, that was a quick KO going the way of Stingray. And now he's got quite a bit of health to play with. Blue's going to need something bigger. We haven't seen too much from his sword. Generally, the sword has just been a KO tool, but now he's got to have to play some kind of standard 1v1s. Play in the side air game, opts to swap as he has the opportunity as Stingray's coming back to the stage. Side sick connects, and suddenly everything's back to equal. Gonna chuck those weapons up, juggling them, of course, going back to the scythe as we come into the second stocks here. Stingray able to grab that spear pretty quickly. Again, that footsie game, nothing after the sidelight. He saw Blue was gonna retreat back to the stage. No need to try and do a sidelight off the stage. That's just gonna let Blue punish him. That was a great interrupt there. Stingray was coming in with the sidelight, and Blue actually caught him with a neutral light inside of it. Off-stage opportunity. Stingray's going to back away, not even threaten an end sig or anything. Blue gets up before he gets to that third exclamation point. Not going to risk that wall slip. Interesting that Stingray came in with a sidelight as the no sort punish. of landing. Oh, he's trying it again. They're starting to come out more. He's catching so many people with those today, but that might start to slow down now that Blue has just called out two of them. Woo! There's a ground pound. You saw the weapon nice. toss. It went wide in case he went deep into the push-off column, and then he followed it up closer to the stage with the KO. Great self-coverage. Goes for the recovery. Stingray not able to punish the whiff. But you're, you're absolutely right in that Blue has been able to call out those down Ooh. sigs from Stingray. Gets a great read with the GCN light in the air as well. He is trying to rack up that extra credit. Again, Stingray is missing the down six. Something he's been so effective with as of late is those Orion Lance down six. That is going to be the KO. Blue going to come in on his final stock. Stingray very damaged here. There is a weapon spawn. He's not going to strip it straight away. Again, Stingray is going to focus on him having a spear rather than caring about what Blue has in his hands. We'll see how that ends up playing out. We see the neutral air coming in from Stingray. The jumping neutral airs. A lot of neutral airs coming, and all it took was a side stick from the middle of the stage. Blue takes game two. He's going to tie it up again. That Just the fact that he took a game off of Stingray is a surprise. By most metrics, he was not expected to make it this far or get here. But Blue is playing on point. There was a lot of people, like, because we watch these matches on the side, and there's some people talking like, oh, man, Blue's getting really lucky. Like, some of the people he's playing against are, like, mental boomed. And I believe it was Remy who was sitting there and was like, no, he's just playing really well today yep. and uh that's absolutely true blue's playing out of his mind okay so we haven't gotten into this game yet i want to look at this graph because there are two moments if we can get if we can get it on the back screen so i can point at it that would be uh incredible i would love that that would be so cool if that happened how I'm, about now i'm i'm, Wait, how about now? I'm asking for that i'm um, are we okay which cool. part are you pointing at okay i want to zoom into these two points okay. right here yeah this is damage taken from Stingray, of course. These really vertical lines means, one, of course, that it happened very quickly. But those are going to be those moments with the scythe where it's just Sayer, Nair, Sayer, Nair, Sayer, Nair, over and over and over. The fact that he did that at two different times. We even see it here on the beginning as well. His openings with that, his explosive potential with that scythe that he's able to continuously get is so huge for him. It's just 50, 80, 100 damage before you can even shake a stick at it. Yeah, that's really tough to contend with when you're playing against a weapon like the Scythe. And right now, he's got that Scythe in hand. Okay. Again, all of this damage being added up. All of a sudden, Stingray is orange. Pretty deep into the orange, less than 20 seconds into the game. Another steep graph, at least for the first stock. He's able to consistently do that, which is something not a lot of Scythe players are able to do that often. Even Sandstorm can struggle to do that that quickly. He'll still be able to build up the damage, but it'll be over a longer period of time. But Blue, man, he's finding them all the time against a bunch of different players with a bunch Ooh. of different weapons and a bunch of different matchups. He's also finding that side signature for the KO. He ended the last game with it. He started this game with it. He's been so good with those side signatures. I believe he got two KOs in the last game with those. And of course, starting this one off with a side to KO. And it's this time it's Blue with so much health to play with against Stingray. 
I think uh, we're really seeing now why Snowy was so angry that he lost to a Scythe <laughs> and ended up uh, airing out his frustrations with the oh. weapon. Oh my goodness! Neutral signature from Stingray. Hasn't found too many of them so far. Now that he's down 0-2, he's able to even this one up pretty quickly. Yeah, that NSIG KOing for Stingray. Definitely gonna help him out a little bit, but Blue, again, he's just been doing this amazing job of keeping Stingray on the corner. That's one of the things that you can do with Scythe with those active inputs is decide where you want to throw him off of an end light or, an, or sorry, a Nair or a Dare. But he's been doing such a good job of keeping Stingray to the edge. He just went for the side light Dare, didn't go for the neutral light follow up from Stingray, which is a very popular string to use or combo to use when your opponent is, was Ooh. as little damaged as Blue was is gonna get hit with that weapon toss just a little bit, but Stingray's not able to follow it up. Blue still holding on to this lead. That was a side light into the immediate neutral light, maybe expecting a dodge down, or it could have been a miss input where the jump didn't come out, leading to the Nair. Whoa! True combo! Side sig from the middle of the stage. Stingray finding the signature KO options. Yeah, it's so crazy, because like Stingray, for a, a little while every now and then, will just like struggle to do damage, or he's not getting those follow-ups, or he's not getting those openers that he wants. And then suddenly he gets that big burst, gets the right read into that side sig or the end sig, and will get that KO. And now he's got the lead, but Blue immediately shuts it down, gets it down light side air, and he's going to pick Scythe, of course. We're continuing to see a very similar pace to what we saw in Blue versus Java, where the first two games went to Blue. It's looking like it almost might be a 3-0, but no, game three and four then went to Java, and Blue clutched it out in game five. That could be what we have here, as Blue just turned red. You saw him dodge away from that neutral signature follow-up that Stingray threw out. d oh! KO off the top. That's the second one of those I've seen Stingray get today. The last one was on Enigma. It was way high in the air, but this time it was grounded. And again, now we have that pace that we saw in Blue versus Java. Every single time Stingray has hit those signatures to KO, it has surprised me. I know it's Small Brawl Haven. I know it's a Jira with low defense, but still, they're KOing so quick. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're switching maps over to Miami Dome for game number four. I'll tell you what, if Orion was a new character that you were releasing now, you just had great tournament footage showing off each individual signature, finding a KO. We saw the neutral sig, we saw the side sig, and we saw the down sig on Lance. We'll see if this game on the dome, that changes maybe a little bit more to Spear, Whoa. or if he's going to keep going in with the Lance gay play that got him the last game's victory, but he has to be so careful. Blue, starting off this game so well. Gets back to the main platform. He could have maybe gone for a response, an unarmed response onto Stingray, who was recovering back, but no, he prioritized the weapon pickup, got a nice side air, another side air. That one's gonna KO, almost a clean stock for Blue. His sword side airs are so impressive. It reminds me of like classic Brahala play where like that was like the big thing you did as a sword player was just kind of uh, keep vertical with the opponent and then hit those side airs whenever they went for a reaction. And he's doing such a good job of just walling out Stingray. Now we're seeing that Lance continue to come into play and it is not an issue whatsoever for Blue. I'm telling you, these 45 degree angle initiation, Stingray has nothing for them. There's a nice side light down air into the neutral light, but he doesn't make a connection with the third move. Spear coming out for Stingray, hoping this is gonna be the linchpin he needs to bring himself back in this. I, I, I suddenly just realized that we are on the cusp of PR42 yep. going into the grand finals yep. over Stingray. He's currently up 2-1. Stingray is down a stock. Oh, he tried to go cheeky with a GCD Didn't like get, too. Though. Blue feeling very confident about his situation in this game. Weapon spawn there. Oh. DC KOing off the top. When I get home... I am going to go into training mode and figure <laughs> out around what damage it takes to actually get the KO off the top with that. Because I'm sure it's less than I think it is, mm -hmm. but it's probably more than it should be. I mean, it is Miami Dome, a relatively high ceiling, not too high for Blue to get that KO on a Stingray, though. And now Stingray, one stock left to try to stay inside the top side of this bracket. Otherwise, we're getting more upsets. Lance in hand, Stingray sticking in the middle of the stage. Full stock behind here. Finds his way back on. Okay. Okay. Oh, didn't get the read, though. Thought he was going to panic jump. He did Blue find stayed the side low. air. Back to the recovery on the stage. So adding a little bit more damage. The damage base is definitely favoring Stingray, 
even though he is technically behind in the overall grand scheme of things. Good spot dodge, but it's not enough. Side light, side air. I swear, this is exactly what happened with Java. Except maybe in, in game four, I'm, I might just be uh, wanting to serve my own narrative and mm -hmm. saying this is exactly what happened. But in my memory, this is exactly what happened, where game four had an amazing turn up from Java. Well, we definitely need an amazing turn up here for Stingray if he wants to get this to game five, much like Java did in his matchup against Blue. Ultimately, Blue did win that match, and he might actually just deny that game five opportunity as Stingray cannot afford another D-Light side air off the edge. We now have seen the trend. It started off with Blue really focusing. Ooh, this is so close. I thought he might go for the recovery uh -oh. off the bounce. Stingray, finding some good damage. He got the dodge there. Ooh, okay. A little bit of patience coming out. Punishes the whiff. Doesn't get the read with the side tick this time. Swaps over to the spear. Blue really picking and choosing. He's not thrown out attack for a hot minute here. He is waiting for Stingray to whiff. Misses the Sair. He's doing a lot of those fadeaway Sairs to try to move in, pick up the weapon or pick up the hit, and then fade back out. He hasn't had the chance to really punish any landing so far. Now he's in the air. He's got to be very oh, careful. Oh. He doesn't get hit with a recovery just like that. One more might do it. Swapping back immediately over to the spear after throwing out the Lance Down signature. There is a weapon spot on the field. Blue grabs it. It is the sword. Seems like he's been leaning on that for some of his chaos. Oh, that's a, that's punish. a punish right there. Daylight side air denying the game. 5-3-1 goes to Blue. He's going to grand finals. Upset after upset. Blue. PR number 43. I don't what his what his seed has to be so incredibly low, and yet he has gotten his spot oh, in the grand finals. The beautiful, movement. beautiful punish on that. I believe he's going into movement speed stance. I could be wrong on that one, but using all of that movement speed to run away, then move back in once he saw that D sig being queued up. Look at the damage. This is so important. You saw how close that game was. 557 to 594. That's 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 pretty close, right? That's around 40 damage. It's actually uh 40 uh